And on this video, I'm gonna give you a complete tour of the setup menu and my personally recommended settings for the Riding Tombow 360X mirror dash cam. Now, the setup menu and the settings that I'm about to show you are also gonna be helpful for anybody who owns the Riding 360 view mirror dash cam. The main difference is that there are a couple of more features on the Tombow than there are on the 360 view. And I have previously reviewed this dash cam in the channel and the 360 view. I'll put a link in the description down below to those videos in case you want to check those out. And I have just updated my mirror dash cam with the latest software from Raiden, which adds several new features which I have not seen on other dash cams yet. And what's great about it is that that update is also applicable to the 360 view. So let's begin with how to access the setup menu. I'm gonna tap on the screen and I'm gonna stop the current recording. Once the recording stops, I can go into the settings with the gear icon. And you'll notice that the setup menu is divided into two pages. Let's begin with the first setting, which is the brightness of the screen. We can run that at low, medium, or high, or we can have it set on auto, where it uses a sensor on the back of the mirror dash cam to automatically dim or make the dash cam brighter. Let's talk about the G sensor. This dash cam is able to sense when you get into a car crash because it's gonna feel that the car got hit. And here you can select how sensitive you want that sensor to be. Now it is possible that if I leave it on high, we can potentially have the dash cam think that we're crashing left to right. Any little bump on the road could potentially trigger the sensor and the dash cam is gonna create a false record of something that was not really a car crash. So I recommend experimenting with your vehicle depending on the suspension of your car and depending also on the roads that you normally travel or where you want that sensitivity to be. I do not recommend you turn it off because if you turn it off, the dash cam is not gonna detect when you get into a car crash and it's not gonna flag that video for you. Sure, you'll have the video on there, but it could potentially be lost because it is not being flag that's important by the G sensor. At the very least, I recommend running this on low. Next up is indicator parking lines. Now this is two different deals. The indicator is a little LED in the front of the dash cam and we can have that LED be off or on. Now that LED is gonna turn on when you are not recording and it's gonna turn off when you are recording. Additionally, the LED will flash when the dash cam is triggered during parking mode, which I think is a good idea to let people know that, hey, there is a dash cam recording you. However, if you wanna be completely stealthy about that, you can turn that off. I'm gonna leave mine on. The second part of this is the parking lines. If this dash cam is connected to the reverse Intel I saw the vehicle, we're gonna get reverse guidelines. However, if for some reason we don't want the reverse guidelines, we can turn them off. Now remember, this option is really only gonna matter if that optional wire that is included with the dash cam is connected to the reverse Intel I saw the vehicle. If that wire is not connected, playing with the setting is not gonna do anything. The next setting is gonna be audio recording. The dash cam records both video and audio. However, we can turn the audio off so we only record video, which some people like for privacy purposes. However, I like to record both audio and video. Now the next one controls how the rear camera is displayed. And we're gonna look at the standard and the mirror option. And I'm gonna go back here to show you what the rear camera looks like. You notice that we do have a small preview of what the rear camera looks like. I'm gonna tap on that. And notice here where the fire hydrant is at and notice what the vehicles are at. Now this right now is simulating a regular standard mirror. So things are flipped as in a normal mirror in the way that we are used to using it in our car. However, if I select standard, notice what happened to the image. It literally got flipped horizontal. And now the fire hydrant is on the other side, the cars are on the other side. So this can potentially allow you to flip that image but I personally like to run it on mirror so it behaves like a standard mirror would. Next up is picture in picture and we have the option of having it on or off. And this is that little mini screen that I showed you earlier on here, which allows me to switch between the rear view and going back to that 360 view. If I turn this off, notice what's gonna happen. Now there is no preview on here and also notice that I'm not able to switch to the rear view. So for that reason, I prefer to have that picture in picture on enable. The next option is gonna be screen saver, which allows the dash cam to turn off the screen after a certain period of time 
but continue recording. And you can select either one minute or two minutes. Now I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna simulate what it looks like by tapping on the button. When the screensaver comes on, basically this returns to a standard mirror so we can use it just like a normal mirror, but nobody knows that we are still recording in what I call stealth mode recording. Now, I personally don't use the screensaver option. I leave this in off because if I ever want to use this as a regular mirror, I can just tap on this button. And again, remember the dash cam is recording even if the screen is off. Moving over to the second page of settings, we have language and we have four choices in here to choose from in case we wanted to change that from the default one. And here's one of the most exciting features that was just added to this dash cam and that is the password feature. And I've been wanting this feature to be available on mirror dash cams and they have finally implemented on here. In fact, this is the only dash cam that I know of that has a password feature, which is gonna be great for anybody who's taking the car perhaps to the dealer for service or if you're handing over the car to a valet. Now I have already set a password, so I'm gonna turn on the password on here and I'm gonna go to the front. Now I'm gonna resume recording and notice what happens. It wants a password. That is because now every function on the dash cam pretty much is protected by the password. So notice what happens if I happen to be leaving this car at the ballet and the ballet notices that I have a dash cam and he touches it and I'm gonna stop the recording. The ballet cannot stop the recording because it is protected by a password. Same thing if I drop the car off at the dealer the dealer is not gonna be able to stop the recording as far as on here on the mirror digitally because it is protected by a password. And also remember the memory card on top of the dash cam is protected by a screw which could potentially be swapped out for a security screw. And also there is a very interesting feature on the Tombow 360X which is the backup to solid state drive and in that feature, not only do we have a record in the memory card, but also to an outside solid drive that is connected to the dash cam. So we can potentially have two places where the information, where the video is being recorded and is protected, again, the dash cam via a password. Now, in case you're wondering about how can the person use a dash cam as far as just normal use if it's protected by a password, well, some functions are still functional. For example, I'm gonna swap over to the rear view. So the person that I'm handing over my car to can still use this as a regular mirror. Now, if for some reason they were to tap on that button, we are still recording. Again, this is just turning off the screen and double tapping on it brings us back to the front. Notice, however, that the view cannot be moved from here. Even though we are recording in 360, the person using the car when it's locked in a password is not gonna be able to change this. And the next option is volume, where we can have low, medium, or high. Next up is frequency. Here, I recommend 50 Hertz if you are in Europe or 60 Hertz if you are in the United States. And what this does, this is gonna reduce any amount of flickering of any lights that you may potentially record. Next, we have time setting. And I'm gonna tap on here on auto select time. You'll notice that we have a list of time zones to choose from and also the auto select time. Remember the dash cam is using the GPS to pull the date and time. So in order for us to make sure that it does get the time and date correctly, we can have it in auto select time. And if it's incorrect, we can select the actual time zone that we are located. And again, confirm that the time looks correct and also if you happen to be in one of those states that observes daylight savings time, you could potentially make that adjustment when you go into daylight savings time to add or remove an hour as needed. Next up under system setting, we have format the memory card. Now this can potentially be used to erase all the videos in the dash cam at once and it is also recommended to use this function every time a brand new memory card has been installed. Next up is factory, and this just restores the factory settings. And you also will notice that there is a date and time information right here, which does allow us to adjust it. However, there should not be a need to adjust it here if we select the correct time zone or if we are using the auto time zone selection. And lastly, this shows you the current firmware that the dashcam is currently running. 
And earlier I mentioned that the Tombo 360X is recording to an internal memory card, but that it has the ability to have a secondary backup place for the video, which is that external solid drive option, which I can potentially tuck away somewhere in the car. Now, what's really interesting is that that feature is accessed with this icon right here. If I were to tap that, the videos are backed up to the solid state drive. However, on this newest software, they have added the ability for the backup to happen automatically for emergency events, basically when the dash cam gets triggered. So for example, let's imagine that we have put a password on the dash cam and the person that's driving the car gets for some reason into an accident or a small bump on the road, and the dash cam is gonna detect that a potential incident has just occurred and it's gonna have that record of that incident in the memory card, but also a second copy is being sent to the solid state drive for safekeeping. So I really think the new software for this mirror dash cam really takes it to a whole new level with that password feature and with that automatic backup to solid state drive for emergency events. So remember, I put a link in the description down below to the mirror dash cam in case you wanna get one for yourself, along with links to the original review videos and you wanna check those out, both for the Tombo 360X and the 360 view. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more mirror dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.